warm. It's looking grey. Hey everybody, how's it going? Oh, goodness me, I've just been half wheeled by Rob, Harrison, and especially Charlie. And then Harrison tried to out sprint me, that was good fun. I was thinking about something over the last week, something which I briefly touched on last weekend, and that was like the attachment of the act of training to how I felt about it and stepping away from racing as a career. It made it so much easier to train because there was no link between performance and career potential, for example. And it made me realize that I spent my whole time trying to perfect my training in a way which was probably quite unrealistic. And that actually, instead of aiming for that perfection all the time, which was exhausting, because ultimately you could ride 300 watts for 90 minutes, or you could ride 287 watts for 90 minutes. It's almost exactly the same thing. The actual benefit to your body is next to nothing difference then, that is. So instead, I wish that I'd really focused on consistency. I think it would have been less, less exhausting to have tried to get 90% of the way, 100% of the time, instead of getting 100% of the way, 50% of the time. Ultimately, being consistent with your training is what's gonna pay off. I'll explain why. In just a second, after the little downhill. I've been doing a lot of thinking recently, which is something I like to do, especially when I'm out on my bike, just thinking about how I could have got more out of myself when I was racing. And I think ultimately, as I said before, striving for consistency would have been better than striving for perfection all the time. I used to get so worked up when things didn't go perfectly well. And that kind of robbed me of a little bit of the enjoyment, but at the same time, I convinced myself, no, I need to feel like this in order to push myself to get the most out of myself. I'm not entirely sure that is always the case. I think ultimately it would have been better to have turned up and gotten as close as I possibly could most of the time and then walked away and just been like no I've done all I can today that was good that's what we're getting for today it's what we're getting out of ourselves as of ourselves and consistency is more important but that doesn't just apply to training it applies to resting as well like making sure you book yourself in a consistent day or two days a week of structured rest what I mean by structured rest is you're having a rest because you've made yourself tired before you need that time off in order to recover in order to get stronger so being consistent with that, you know, choosing two days a week that are important to have off, I think ultimately it's gonna help you get more out of your cycling as well. Then it applies to other things as well. It applies to nutrition, it applies to work as well, and your attitude towards other people. Just being consistent with what you're doing will reap greater rewards than striving, perhaps unrealistically, for perfection. Are we all crave perfection at something at some point in our lives. Mine was within my training. Ultimately now I think I could have done it better. It could be the perfect ride, the perfect corner, the perfect descent, perfect technical time trial, for example. And it's really good to want it, but actually accepting that consistency is also really important. And I think that's probably more rewarding because it's not lowering your expectation. I don't think that's fair, but it is just understanding that sometimes things will happen that are outside of your control, which will prevent that perfection. Imagine you want to go out and ride for three and a half hours, hilly ride in the rain, a road was closed, or the weather was so bad you have to turn back early. Things like that, they are variables that you don't actually have a huge amount of control over. You can only dress for certain weather. You can't change road closures. You can't change unforeseen things. And then relying on that consistency, is going to be better on that day than striving for that perfection. Hey, look, look at this, spring is out finally. The little white flowers. Hopefully they come through nicely. Hopefully you can actually see the white flowers nicely. I let my ego get the better of me this morning. I didn't give in to the half wheeling. And I was seeing stars coming back down Ladot Valley, which is where I used to do all my 20 minute like threshold type efforts. And I don't feel too good now either. And then trying to sprint Harrison was hard as well. Funnily enough, I didn't film any of it because I was out on the limit. But it's good. It's the first real hard ride 
outside certainly since having had that illness at the start of March, so it's nice. Only a few weeks until racing starts, so it's probably good timing to start really ramping things up again and feeling a little bit more like normal. We've got a couple of short, sharp little hills on the way home, and we're going to enjoy Easter weekend. And if we're talking about consistency, let's look at a one person case study, which is never a good idea, but we're going to do it anyway. And we're going to pull over as well because it's going to get loud otherwise on the descent. Micah, she's made some huge efforts over recent years to train, but it's only since December, sorry, October 2020 when her e bike came where she's strung together these consistent periods of dedicated training. And then with the indoor riding and the indoor racing as well, things have just accelerated massively. I can't remember, we said her FTP had gone up by 70 watts or more a few weeks ago in a video. I think it's more than that now. She's up well over 213 was what it pops up with on Zwift when she rides in there. So that's huge. But that is only because of those consistent periods of trying to ride five days a week, not always being perfect, not always feeling good. And that just proves that it's not that perfection proves in her case, there will be uh, exceptions to these rules as ever as with anything I ever say like last week as well for some people you might have to be incredibly lean and skinny but on the whole most of us won't benefit from that and it's the same with this some of us will benefit from striving for perfection and that will suit our characteristics but I think you know personality traits but I think for many of us actually what you really want to be aiming for is consistency strive for good consistency getting as close as you can as often as you can rather than aiming for the one or two perfect days per week aim for five good consistent solid days it's not like we're lowering expectation like I said before to be way off the mark you're just adjusting things to make it more achievable more of the time and ultimately by doing that you will see better fitness gains you will see better technical advances in your cycling as well and that's that's what we should all be looking for is just to to improve ourselves and that helps with every aspect of life then as well and I think that ends up with us all feeling that little bit more fulfilled and a little bit happier which in life is probably one of the most important things isn't it fulfillment happiness things like that certainly what I've learned over recent years is aiming for those feelings and those those markers those goals that's what makes me happy and I think many of us aren't that different in that regard I'm gonna ride home it's been way too hard. I'm really, really quite puffed out. It's like a rude awakening, I think, today. And I'm really relieved that I was wearing aero tights and a very tight jersey, otherwise I would have been in a whole world of pain. Even more so than I was. If I'd had any ounce of, or well not ounce, but any extra thread flapping around in the wind, I think that would have been it. I would have gone pop and had to go and sit on the back. But it's good. It's nice to have a rude awakening, like a little, a little reminder that you're not as good as you think you are. I wouldn't call it an ego bashing quite, but it wasn't that far off it. It's going to work out now what I need to do to make sure that doesn't happen again. Which is fun, right? Now it's a, tra a training challenge. Now I get to correct something which isn't currently to my satisfaction. And it's always good to have those little challenges. I actually think one of the most important areas to focus on is probably going to be a little bit of rest in between harder rides. I don't think you can train. I don't think I can train hard as often as I would like to. And I think actually using the e-mountain e e bike really, really helps keep that intensity down and keep my legs fresher for the harder rides. I did a really good ride this week where I went out and just completely followed my nose. I had no idea where I was really going. I knew the first little bits of trail and then after that, no idea. And it was in shorts and t-shirt and a pair of flat shoes on an e-bike. And it was just one of the most wholesome cycling experiences ever because it was like being a child again. No plan, no no sense of needing to achieve anything other than just a genuine adventure and it's really nice i quite enjoyed that so i think we'll do more of that in the future i've waffled on waffled on more than enough yet again seems to be a trend it's easter sunday when you see this video well it might not be i can't control when you watch the video it's easter sunday when the video goes out put it that way i'm gonna go and eat some chocolate eggs hope you all have a good weekend and i'll see you next week or oh, next week I have to think of something before next week. I'm not around next Sunday, so the video won't go live because I'm going to be off riding a contraption that I mentioned before. Otherwise, hope you're safe and well. I will see you again.